Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of December 5th, 2025. Let's talk about recording in Cubase. On every MIDI and audio track, there's a button that looks like a recording button, but is called the Record Enable. Before you can actually record, you have to turn on the Record Enable. To begin recording in Cubase, either come down to your transport, hit the record button, or typically, on your number keypad, hit the little asterisk key, and that begins recording. If you have the Record Enable button on, and then hit the Record button, you'll see the track go red, and you'll see some activity of recording. If you have this Record Enable button off, even if you hit the Record button, no actual recording will happen. So recording is really a two-step process. You have to turn on the Record Enable, whatever track or tracks you want to record on, then you have to hit the record button to begin the process of recording. For me personally, I don't want this to be a two-step process. I want to select my track, know that it's already record enabled, and that way I can just go down and either hit the record button or the number asterisk key, and I will begin recording. In order to make that happen, if you go to edit, down to your preferences, under the editing category, and the little subcategory that says project and mix console, you have two preferences in here that say enable the record on the selected MIDI track and enable record on the selected audio track. If these are unchecked, you have to manually hit the button. If these are checked, then all I have to do is select my track and I am automatically record enabled. And then I can just hit the record button and begin recording. If I want to do something like a punch in or out recording, if I come down to my transport bar, a couple of buttons here that if you hover over them, they say punch in and punch out. Next to those buttons, is a little picture of a padlock, which can be turned on or off. When that button is on, I come up to the ruler and I highlight something, drawing with my locators. In this case, I drew measure three to measure four. As long as that padlock is on, in these punch in and out areas, it will reflect exactly the same thing. In this case, it says measure three to measure four. If I move this highlight area of my locators between measure four and measure five, and then I come down and look at this punch in and out area, it now says measure four to measure five. If I actually want to use this punch in option, I just click on these buttons to turn them on. Don't hit the record button. Instead, I just hit the space bar. As the music plays, the minute the cursor reaches this area between measure four and five, track will go red and the process of recording will happen. The minute it passes this area, the recording will turn off and the cursor will just continue on, just like this. Now, because I have this particular track record enabled with this red button, this is the track that's going to punch in and out. But I can also set up other tracks by turning on this record enable, even if the track isn't selected. And when I begin playing the project with my space bar, both of those tracks will activate. Both will perform a punch in and punch out, turning the record option on, turning the record option off, as the cursor continues. And if I want to remove the punch in and out, I just come down and deactivate these two buttons again. All right, let's talk about some options to quantize audio and MIDI. Up on the toolbar, we have a quantize dropdown, shows all the options for quantizing, and a little quantize button. But over to the right, we have the E that opens up the quantize panel. There are so many things in this quantize panel. Again, we have the list of presets with an option at the bottom to restore the factory presets. We can rename or remove presets. But one of the powerful options is available in this panel is how we can use and apply our own personal groove presets. If you're looking for the right timing on how to quantize something, should you go with an eighth note? Should you go with an eighth note triplet, 16th note or a 16th note triplet? Try to get the right feel for whatever your material is. Sometimes you can avoid that whole process by creating your own personal groove. Let's set up a sampler track real quick. I'll just grab a very simple hi-hat sound and then create a sampler track with it. As the song plays, I'm gonna tap out my own hi-hat beat. The first bar got closer than anything else. I'm just gonna use that. And if I open this up and look at it, you can see how these hits are just slightly ahead of the beat on every little click here, allowing a human feel from programmed MIDI information. If I open my panel back up and I simply take this MIDI part, and drag it onto the panel, now I have the rhythm from that part I can use to quantize any other material. It gave it a name up here. 
so I can identify it and save it if I want to. Now I'm going to apply it to this piano part above it. Just select the part, hit apply, quantize, or just like I normally would, go back up to the toolbar and hit the little Q. Now all the notes on this part have shifted a little bit. When I open the part back up in the key editor, at first you may be fooled because all the notes are lined up on the grid. And if we just moved everything slightly off of the grid, why are the notes that way? One way to gain perspective on this, go back up to your quantize. We're going to move it back to an eighth note. When we do that, now we can see all these notes are slightly off the grid because that's what they've been moved to from my own personal groove quantize. When we change these quantize values, the actual grid moves as well to reflect our change because everything is now going to get quantized to that groove. Grid is going to correct itself as well. If I go back to our new groove, all the marks from the bar are now at the beginning of these notes. But if you look up at the ruler, these grid lines are slightly away from what the ruler actually shows. So the main point here is that you can use any kind of creative groove that you need to get the quantized value that you're trying to achieve. And then this quantized panel is going to do a lot of work in the background to make that happen. All right, let's talk about fades, cross fades, and envelopes. When we look at an audio part, we always have on the left, and on the right, these fade in and fade out handles. We can do them on this one audio part, or I could select multiple parts and then move those handles as well to create fade in and fade out points. Right now, these fade in and fade out handles remain visible the whole time. But if you look at your preferences, you have an option under event display and audio. There's a drop down list on the right that says show fades, and you can have it on all the time or on mouse over. If I switch it over to mouse over, then these fades become hidden until I move my mouse over them. On our audio events now, we have the little volume control in the lower left. When we click on that, then we can change the volume of that event. If we make changes to this volume, it's reflected up here in the volume area of the info line. Right now, this says negative 165. If I've made changes like this to the volume and I want to reset it back to zero, if I go up to the info line, hold control and click on it then it automatically resets to zero learning all the different features of these various subjects like recording and how to quantize properly and fades and cross fades will not only speed up your workflow as you move through trying to create in cubase but it will also ensure that you just have a really good time doing it as well and if you're ready for some deeper training to take you through all these various subjects in cubase and other music software be sure to click the link in the description of this video or stop by the digitalaudiomanual.com for more information. Thanks for watching. As always, it's great to have you here, and I will see you on the next video.